So we move on to Potpourri 2. Okay, same rules, we go anti-clockwise. Cool, so we start with uh, NUJS Team 2 here. Let's start with same rules, plus 10, minus 10 if on a pounce, plus 10 for direct or a pass, no negative marking. Question going to NUJS Team 2. Justin Dash has been the South Asia correspondent for BBC since 2015. His paternal great-grandfather, Sir Sidney Dash, who is pictured here, was a prominent judge on the King's Bench Division of the High Court of England and Wales. Tushar Gandhi, in a conversation with Justin, thanked him very sarcastically, saying, "Great, your great-grandfather's role to provide the first nail in the coffin of the empire. He stated that the beauty of his great-grandfather's action was that he didn't have to be a spin doctor to make people understand that it was unjust. Who was Mr. Justin's famous relative great-grandfather? That's the question. Teams which are pouncing, please raise your hand. I see three teams pouncing, and I close pounce, and I quickly check. Okay? Give me an answer. Okay. So I've seen the answers of the teams which pounced. And you did. Guys, now you can't pounce. Pounce closed. I, when I see it's closed. Yes. And you just team two. Any guesses? No? Move on. Christ pounced. GNLU pounced. You guys pounced, right? And let us you. It's Ilbert. Ilbert. The Ilbert bill. Okay. So Ilbert bill. He says Sydney Ilbert. I'll move on to Symbiosis Law School Pune. Any guesses? They choose to pass. Ram just pounced. Uh, NUJS team one. This is the um, doctrine of lab. So who are we? Okay, they're saying doctrine of lab. Lord Cornwall. Lord uh, Cornwall. Not Cornwallis. You mean Dalhousie? So it's yeah. not uh, doctrine of labs. Moving on to uh, CLC Delhi. We'll go with Dwyer. Okay, they they say Dwyer. It was a direct to you guys. And you just, anyone in the audience? Okay, so we have our chief guest, uh, K. Jairat, sir, who has graced the occasion. Thanks so much, sir. And sir, wants to answer? Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. This is the Rollet Act, which created that detention without any form of procedure, which later was the reason for the protest of the Jallianwala Bag incident. Right, that's Rollet, Sydney Rollet was what we were looking out for, looking for. So teams which are pounced, if you can raise your hand. So Christ Law cracked it with 10 points. <laughs> GNLU cracked it with 10 points. Ramjas College also cracked it with 10 points. So all the teams which pounced got it right. So 10 points to all the teams which pounced and no one answering in the finalists here in the direct round. Direct again to NUJS team two. Right, the cellular jail, as you can see, uh, which is the Andaman Nicobar Islands, was built between 1896 and 1906. The concept of the prison was loosely based on a concept developed by the utilitarian philosopher Jeremy Bentham. Bentham's concept was based on a central watchtower that you can see here on a central watchtower, which would have eyes on each and every prisoner and thus would save cost. This is modern day CCTV camera, right? What was the name of this concept prison which reflects the above fact? So very interesting. You just have to tell me what concept was behind the design of the cellular jail here, which was a concept that Jeremy Bentham came about. Teams which are pouncing, please raise your hand. I see two teams which are pouncing. I'll quickly check there. Okay? Right. So two teams have pounced. Direct to NUJS team two. What's your answer? What inspired the design of the cellular jail? It's, it's kind of very interesting design. What inspired it? What concept inspired it? No idea. Okay, and you just chooses to pass Christ law. Uh, the fan. So the central fan and the wings to it. Okay, the fan inspired it. Looks like a little half fan there. Good thinking. Uh, I'm on. NLSIU. Uh, so 
I'm forgetting the exact keyword that the theory goes by, but it's basically that, that if the prisoner thinks he's always being on guard, his behavior will commensurately be better. And it's, it's, a, it's, it's a concept. So they're saying essentially if you monitor and CCTV camera is there, people will behave properly. Like essentially that if somebody is watching them like a big brother, they will behave properly and there'll be reformation and so on. We'll move on. These guys bounced. Aram just call it. You would say since it was built in India, and in India the concept is uh, the third eye sees everything. There are three, so going by that we would say the third eye that sees everything. The third eye of Shiva which sees <laughs> the transcendental world. Good thinking, so, moving on. Uh, so we guess this is the cat and mouse act. So wherein like the mouse is running, cat is chasing, like they are the... Cat and mouse, Tom and Jerry, they are saying Tom and Jerry, <laughs> moving on. Center for uh, CLC Delhi. Like this is the the seat of power of the prison. So this is like Lex Loci or something. Seat of power, etc. Not quite. Anyone in the audience? Yes, right there. That's the right answer. This is the Panopticon, and the right answer is Panopticon. So this is inspired by the mythical creature Panoptis was a mythical giant with over 100 eyes. So what used to happen is the watchtower would be in such a position that you could see every cell of the prison without the prison inmates knowing that they are being watched. Inspired by Panoptus, the mythical creature, this is Panopticon. Good answer from the audience there. Kudos. And teams which pounced got it right. GNLU, 10 points. And Symbiosis Law School, Pune, good 10 points for them. Well worked. The good thinking, this is the panopticon, and that's the answer I was looking out for. The next question going to Chrysler. So Article 350B of the Indian Constitution provides for the appointment by president of a special officer for dash and dash, dash, dash. It is his or her duty, the special officer's duty, to investigate all matters relating to safeguards provided for a particular set of minority communities and report to the president on the same. The authority has its headquarters at Allahabad with three regional offices at Belgaum, Chennai, and Calcutta. Annual reports are presented to the president through the ministry or the minister of minority affairs. They are laid on the table of both the houses of the parliament. Fill in the blank to, blanks to complete the title of this constitutional authority. So a clue going out to all teams. Okay, no clues because you guys have pounced. I'll, I'll restrain. So direct to Christ law. Direct, yeah, it passes to you guys going anti-clockwise. Teams which are pouncing, raise your hand. I see two teams pouncing. Quickly check their pounces. Okay. And... Guys, actually I had closed the pounds. I saw two teams very specifically. I'll, I'll have to be fair on the national finals because it's high stakes game. So when I say please raise your hand, kindly raise your hand, right? It's just to be fair there. Okay, so I've seen both the pounces. Direct to Christ's law. Uh, special officer for linguistic minorities. Like uh, That's the right answer. Good round of applause to Christ for getting it right. This is something which is lesser known of a constitutional authority. This is the special officer of the linguistic minorities. Good 10 points to Christ law. And teams which pounced NLSIU minus 10. And CLC Delhi also getting themselves a negative minus 10. So next question to JNLU. Your question coming up here. What you see in the video is the Four Freedoms Park in New York City. It was designed by Louis Kahn, the famous architect who designed I Am Ahmedabad and the National Assembly of Bangladesh. However, Khan passed away unexpectedly in 1974. The plans for building this Four Freedoms Park also got a little delayed and was completed and opened only in 2012. The park gets its name from the four freedoms highlighted by a famous person in a famous speech in 1941. The freedom of speech, the freedom of worship, the freedom from want, and famously, freedom from fear. Who was the four freedoms memorial dedicated to? Let me show you guys the video. It was a great sight, both 
and visiting it because of the view of the city and then also the possible view across to a memorial from Manhattan and Queens. And of course, the bridge was in itself a great image too. So this had to be something strong. Lou made a drawing for me, um, a little sketch um, in which he drew a very tall obelisk. And then, and he wrote down five, five, five feet high. And then he drew this island area, five, five feet long. And he said, this has got to be as good as that. The obelisk was the Washington Monument. So then you knew what his ambition was. But this had to be a horizontal monument, but it had to have a power that was as great as the Washington Monument. The bastion, the whole idea had to be thrown out. What is interesting also is that the length of this memorial had 555 feet because of the fact that it had to be a reflection of the Washington Memorial. That's an interesting yeah. fact there, right? So teams which are pouncing, uh, four teams which have pounced, pounce closed. I've seen four teams only pouncing. So let me quickly check your pounces. Okay. So Okay. So I've seen all the pounds answers. Direct to GNLU, who is this famous person after whom the Four Freedoms Park in New York is memorized? Is it from? dedicated to Martin Luther King? Martin Luther King, uh, NLSIU pounced, Symbiosis Law School also pounced, Ramjas College also pounced, NUJS so, team uh, one. We don't know the answer, but we are guessing Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi, moving on to uh, CLC also pounced, NUJS team two. Any guesses? Okay, on a, pa a pass. Nehru. 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 Christ Law. Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill. And the f direct was to JNLU. Yes. Franklin Delano Roosevelt is the right answer. The very famous Four Freedom Speech. I mean, you can see how, like, I mean, when you miss an answer in the quiz, that's what happens. And that's what NUJS team two is feeling right now. This is the famous uh, speech by Franklin Dino Roosevelt. We have a short clip to show you uh, of the Four Freedoms speech. Time Four Freedoms Park was conceived, many New Yorkers could foresee its significance. The New York Times editorial board wrote that a memorial to Roosevelt on this site would face the sea he loved, the Atlantic he bridged, the Europe he helped save, and the United Nations he inspired. I think he would have appreciated its beauty and that the fact that the United Nations is really the principal object of observation when you look at the island. It's his island in that sense. Freedom of speech, is speech? and expression. Everywhere in the world, freedom of every person to worship God in his own way. Everywhere in the world, freedom right. from one. So teams which pounced, if you can raise your hand. So CLC Delhi got 10 points. Ramjas College also got 10 points. Uh, Symbiosis Law School Pune also got 10 points. And NLSIU also cracked it with good 10 points. So the teams which pounced, the scores have been given. So this is Franklin Dino Roosevelt. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Moving on to the next question. In 2004, Ashish Nandi, a social scientist, wrote an article in Outlook magazine titled A Billion Gandhis. In the article, he talked about a particular concept X, which he argued was a Western import and had no purchase in Indian society, which has its own indigenous ideas that were similar to, but not the same as this concept X. Sanjay Subramanyam, a historian at the University of California, Los Angeles, went ahead, responded to Nandi, and took issue with Mr. Nandi's intellectual history of this concept X. He went on to say, in point of fact, the term X has very little purchase in most European or indeed other Western societies as a part of normal political vocabulary. 
Even today, no one in the political sphere much talks about this concept X in the United Kingdom, Germany, Italy, France, Spain, or Portugal, yeah. or in the United States, Argentina, or Brazil. Neither Tony Blair nor Ms. Thatcher has ever used the word in a speech that I can remember. Identify this concept X, which of course makes the mention in today's quiz, and you know that we, the focus is of course on the constitution and so on. So let us know what concept or what word are we talking about here. So who's direct? Okay, direct to teams which no one got it right. So it goes back to GNLU. So GNLU's direct uh, answer. So teams. So I, I just said the. I mean we are still in a constitution quiz. So we are looking to a term from constitution and so on, right? So. Team GNLU, that's your direct, any team pouncing, okay, no team taking a risk here, no team pouncing, okay, team NUJS, you guys, I close pounce, okay, so I've seen the answer from NUJS team 2 and direct to GNLU. The local self-government? Local self, local self government. So, local self government is what they're thinking Panchayati Raj and local self government, NLSIU. It, is it anti incumbency? Anti incumbency. Or incumbency, the, the idea that the same people. Idea of the anti incumbency, very good thinking. So, not anti incumbency, Symbiosis Law School, Pune. Uh, secularism. Secularism is the right answer. Very good. So I think he went on to say that none of these countries actually use secular in like, you know, democratic, republic, secular and so on. But it's a concept that we have incorporated. That's the right answer. Secularism, good 10 points to Symbiosis Law School, Pune. And a minus 10 to NUJS Team 2. Hard luck, guys. Minus 10 for that. Okay, so direct question. The last question in the Potpuri round going to Ramjas College. It's a video. So let me just give you a sense of the question. This is Miss Emily Wilding Davidson. Died at 1913 Epson Derby after being hit by King George Fies the Horse Anmer after she had walked into the track during the race. Many believe it was an act of protest. This was dramatized in a 2015 movie, the clip we will show. Along with her, there were many, including Princess Sophia Alexandra Dulip Singh, the daughter of Maharaja Dulip Singh, who was also amongst many who were fighting for a similar cause. Look at the clip and tell us the cause that she was fighting for. Right? So, can we dim the lights and we can look at the video? Emily. I see five teams which are pouncing, I, six teams and I close pounce, okay, so, okay, okay, let me just check your answer again so that I am clear, okay, 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 that's your direct. So I've seen the answers of the pounds. Direct to Ramjas College. Uh, going by the timeline, we'd say women's suffrage. So uh, the right for women to vote. 
Right to oath. Women's suffrage. That's the answer I was looking out for. Good 10 points to Ramjas College. And teams which bounced, if you can raise your hand. Right? So 10 points to Christ Law. They got it right. 10 points. GNLU cracked it with 10 points. NLSIU also cracked it with 10 points. Symbiosis Law School, 10 points. Energy uh, Team won 10 points. And CLC Delhi also 10 points. One hundred years ago, Britain's greatest national event was stopped in its tracks by a very public, very shocking, fatal act of protest. At the height of the 1913 Epsom Derby, in front of thousands of spectators, a lone figure walked into the path of the galloping horses. What happened next was captured on film in horrific detail. The woman in this footage was Emily Wilding Davison. She was a suffragette and she climbed underneath the running rail into the path of the King's horse. We are ready with scores after two rounds of quizzing at the national final. The scores of the teams are stacked up. Campus Law Center, Delhi at 20 points. So NUJS team won. I think they took a couple of negatives. I had to open their account. Ramjas College with 70 points. Great effort, SLS Pune at 80 points, NLSIU with 50 points, GNLU with 60 points, School of Law, Christ University at 70 points, and NUJS Team 2 with 10 points.